Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run for the UKV and have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as it does look likely we'll see around average maybe slightly above average especially early this week in terms of surface temperatures before later in the week turning cooler but we will continue to see a lot of precipitation. The typical pattern we're going to be seeing over the next couple of weeks is the sort of pest from the west pattern that we do uh, or a lot of people do dread when we come to winter and people want a bit of snow uh, the westerly winds are the worst thing possible and looks like we've got a bit of a pest or west pattern coming up at the moment where we just consistently have westerly momentum not a lot of application of the jet stream at all so no southerly airflows no northerly airflows so upper air temperatures are around average or if not slightly below average nothing exceptional at all and just loads of of repeated bouts of heavier precipitation especially in the north but widely a lot of showers gusty winds and thick cloud that looks like the pattern at least for the next seven days maybe up as much as the next 10 days but by that point as we'll see on the models there are starting to see signs of maybe some amplification in the jet stream but nothing too crazy at this stage um, but yeah for the time being it does look pretty miserable over the next couple of weeks it will be drier in the south inevitably but it won't be bone dry there will be days of dry weather but there will also be days of washout rain uh, and a lot of showers as well as well so if you're in the north it will be pretty miserable if you're in the south there could be some good days but there could also be some miserable days as well so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the links in the description so if you start on the live radar you can see we do have heavy precipitation pushing out the southeast at the moment it did spread in earlier today uh, or last night really and is now clearing as i'm recording this around midday it is now clearing off the coast of kent but had given a good few hours of heavier precipitation along the south uh, southern net portions of England uh, so yeah a good five to ten millimeters being dropped there in some places but it's now moving well into the continent and most areas are pretty dry as we do have a brief ridge of higher pressure building in but you can see across northern Scotland and Northern Ireland still some showers and thicker cloud but as said, elsewhere it is pretty decent look at those temperatures around midday widely into the blues and yellows so sort of low to mid teens maybe getting up towards 18 19 or even maybe the isolated 20 degree today uh, as we do have sunnier weather moderate upper air temperatures maybe slightly actually above average upper air temperatures which will mean those temperatures can rise to a bit of early october warmth but once again i'm not expecting anything too exceptional those temperatures will be dipping towards the end of this working week uh, and and then just look likely we're going to a spell of quite a lot of, of below average upper air temperatures if you do now go over to the UKV and have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days, you can see the precipitation in the south earlier today that it's spread through as around lunchtime it's cleared and this afternoon you can see generally pretty nice, pretty dry, some clouds popping up and a few showers in northern England and Scotland but nothing too much. Over the course of this evening, you see thicker clouds starting to arrive from the west. And as we head in tomorrow, typical best from the west fashion, heavy rain pushes in. Predominantly for Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Scotland, at least initially tomorrow. But it should spread further eastwards and southwards into Tuesday for eventually progressing through, giving a lot of heavier precipitation for many through Tuesday and Wednesday. For it does start to turn a little bit drier, at least in the south. But look in the north, a lot of heavy showers still pushing in. And by Wednesday, Thursday time, more heavy showers. And you can see some more showers maybe pushing into the south for a time. So you can see from this that most of the time there will be rain uh, in Scotland. There will be uh, quite a high risk at most times to see at least some heavier precipitation, uh, persistent precipitation or showers. For the south, there will be a few days here or there where it's dry. But there will also be a few days where it is wetter as well, especially looking like Wednesday and maybe uh, and Tuesday perhaps as well. So we've just got to keep an eye on it at this stage. But yeah, the north does look pretty miserable. The south, maybe some days of drier weather uh, and maybe some warm weather earlier in the week. If you have a look at the max temperatures, see what they're showing over the next few days. Again, today you can see temperatures maybe peaking 17, 18 or 19, or maybe the isolated 20. So not too bad as we head into tomorrow. Overnight temperatures dropping down to sort of the high single digits, 8, 9, 10 degrees. And it's tomorrow afternoon we can see those temperatures maybe rise again to around 18, 19, maybe 20 degrees, but widely mid to high teens. 
as we head into Tuesday, not too bad overnight and the afternoon, maybe again 17, 18, 19 degrees, much colder across Scotland. And as we head into Wednesday, you can see those temperatures really chilly across Scotland as we've got heavy rain pushing into the south, cooling down a bit down towards 15, 16, 17 degrees. And into Thursday, overnight temperatures dropping down a little bit lower, and maybe again 16 to 18 degrees. But again, it's not going to feel all too great when we've got cloud and precipitation. Doesn't matter what the thermometer temperatures are, it will feel uh, not too great. Um, but those upper air temperatures will be falling in the longer term. You can see most of this week they are around sort of eight, nine, ten degrees at eight fifty HPA. Maybe briefly sort of twelve, thirteen degrees there every Tuesday within that warm air mass but by the end of the week you can see much more blues pushing in down towards freezing at 50 hp back towards average if not below average now if we do have a look at the uh gfs and see what that's showing you over the next couple of weeks you can see it is all in from the west look at that westerly momentum a brief ridge of high pressure at the moment but just as we move beyond that just look at that westerly momentum just flat westerly wind center flows to our north so it's not going to be terrible and this is why the north is predominantly going to be seeing the precipitation the gusty winds just because the center flows further north so if the jet stream was a few hundred miles further southwards we'd expect to be seeing much more stormy conditions widely at least and maybe even some named storms but with the jet stream across northern England and Scotland, the centre of the lows back over towards Iceland, so it won't be affecting us. Beyond that, we just stay from a flat westerly, maybe some application at day 10, but all that's doing is maybe bringing some uh, brief higher pressure more widely before low pressure sinks back in, and right towards the end of the run we are. In from the west, yes, pressure is changing, it's fluctuating, but follow those isobars, it's coming from southern Greenland and northeast Canada, straight in from the west to northwest. Um, and again, it will be oscillating between cooler and warmer air mass. There's no real point looking at the GFS because it is uh, very much depending on positioning of low, but as we'll see the ensembles at the end of the video, you'll be able to see those upper air temperatures very much are um, warm at least initially of the next few days before turning consistently average to below average into the middle of October but yeah no real change today flat westerly not great if you're looking for any sort of interesting weather or any drier weather or uh, anything cold or anything like that it's not looking good out there um, so yeah just generally miserable weather for many uh, days in the north in the south lesser miserable weather but still there will be those horrible days out there but equally could be a few decent days as well if you look at the EGM see how that does compare again Brief ridge of high pressure at the moment, but again, the westerly winds just push in and we just stay with a westerly flow. Right at day 10, as I said, a bit of amplification. High pressure trying to build in for a day or two there, but look at that. Low pressure out in the Atlantic pushing back through, and that application actually turns things more widely um, low pressure based because the jet stream pushes slightly further southwards and we see this big low pushing in. So uh, the GEM, yes, does try and build high pressure on a, a day 8, day 9, but by day 10, low pressure is tumbling back in off the Atlantic, so not looking particularly great at all, unfortunately. So yeah, a continued pattern of westerly winds here from the GEM today. If you go to the ECMWF, see how that does compare. Again, you can see flat westerly at the moment. Uh, we just continue with that, and all the way to day 10, yes, brief ridge of higher pressure. So we are seeing a signal around day 9, day 10 of high pressure, but still we've got low pressure out in the Atlantic, so this could topple very quickly like the GM does. Uh, and you can see it could actually start to bring cooler air in from the east. We are getting to that time of year, around middle of October and later, where an easterly wind is not going to be amazingly cold. Of course, we are in the autumn, but it will start to be chilly. Uh, feeling cold, uh, maybe frosts as well. So even though, yes, this is building a brief ridge of higher pressure, it would turn things drier, it could even turn things a lot colder as well with an easterly flow. Again, look at the temperature deviation well below average. So keep, need to keep an eye on that in the longer term as well. If you finish, we'll have a look at the ensembles, look at the GFS, we're going to look at the midnight run because the 6 o'clock run hasn't fully come out. You can see oh, over the next 3 or 4 days, we are well above average, around 10 degrees, 80 HP for a couple of days there. And that's why temperatures in the south could get towards 18, 19, 20 degrees. But later this week, when that weather front moves through on Wednesday time, and the air mass completely transitions through Thursday, we're back towards average, if not below average for the foreseeable future. Again, precipitation isn't ridiculously high in the south because the centre of the loads are towards Iceland. So 
all that precipitation will be moving into Scotland, uh, fizzling out before it gets towards eastern and southern areas, but we could still see some thicker clouds, some drizzly rain, some heavier precipitation at times, and we could also see a lot of heavy showers. So we will still see precipitation, but just not quite as much, but you can see the upper air temperatures are looking really quite cold, um, or at least cooler than average by a couple of degrees in the longer term, so not looking particularly nice. You look at the sea level pressure over the next couple of weeks for London, you can see generally around the higher to lower sort of boundary around that 1050 and 1020 millibars so we are just on the cusp but that will mean there will be dry days but there will also be showery days as well if we do compare it to glasgow and look at the upper air temperatures i think precipitation you can see much higher precipitation which as i said is expected northern england and scotland and northern ireland are going to see a lot more precipitation so we are likely to see be cooler and with heavier bouts of precipitation there look you see that most days have got some high precipitation spikes so wouldn't be surprised if you're in Scotland in the next week or two to be seeing rain most days. And if you finish by going to London, have a look at the ECMWF ensembles. Again, very, very similar brief spike in upper air temperatures over the next couple of days before we trend towards, if not well below average for the foreseeable future. And you can see precipitation is there, but not huge. Again, showing that the heaviest precipitation is in the north. And you can see that on the, if you have a look at Glasgow, you can see those upper air temperatures are around, if not below average, from the ECMWF ensembles. And you can see the precipitation is very, very high as well. So, yeah. Not a great chart if you are in the northern half of the country, but that is expected this time of year. The south is generally drier than the north, so we're sort of getting typical autumnal conditions. Um, luckily, we are coming off a drier summer, so I don't think this amount of precipitation will cause too much in terms of river flooding issues. But if we had come off quite a wet the past couple of months, we could start seeing issues with these heavier bouts of precipitation and showers. Um, but we will just have to keep that monitored over the next couple of weeks. I'm not expecting anything at this stage, but maybe towards the second half of October into November, if we do see this high level of precipitation and persistent precipitation in the north, we could start to see issues. But anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. It's not going to be particularly great over the next couple of weeks with the best from the west. Uh, but again, I'll see you again for another video soon.